the pro-life calls to defund Planned Parenthood would go nowhere without pro-life support on Capitol Hill. One of those reliable pro-life voices is Representative Trent Franks of Arizona. This week, we sit down with a congressman to hear why he's been pro-life long before his time in politics. Congressman, thank you for your time. Oh, you're so welcome. I'm so glad to be able to be here. Thank you. Now, you've worked on a number of pieces of pro-life legislation. Is there one in particular that you're especially passionate and optimistic about? Well, of course, it would be our Prenatal Law Discrimination Act or our pain-capable bill or our Born Alive. I think, in a way, the pain-capable bill, in some ways, has the, the first shot to, uh, to pass the House and that would protect babies that have become pain capable you know after 20 weeks uh, we know for sure it happens by then certainly there's every indication it happens before then but you know we we go to great lengths in this country to protect animals from cruelty and yet sometimes we don't even protect our own little unborn children from the same kind of cruelty and i hope that this will be a wake up to the country and that it will somehow help us understand the reality here somehow you know show the humanity of the victim and the inhumanity of what's being done to them. How did you yourself, Congressman, come to be pro-life? Well, I have to, to be very open with you. I was pro-life ever since I can remember. My parents were very pro-life. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I was born with some problems myself, and I think that they just uh, inculcated that into my own life and my brothers and sister. And uh, so it's something that's been there a long time. But, Sometimes I think when those of us that have had some challenges in life uh, get a real close-up look at how brief and how precious it is, then we apply that to the world around us. You know, a number of babies with a prenatal diagnosis of Down syndrome are yes, aborted. What do you think that... I, I actually had a brother with Downs. Wow. Uh, you know, I mean, I could get a little bit emotional even now. He mm. passed away here several years back. But he brought so much to our family. Hmm. And I think someday, on the other side of uh, eternity, we might find out it was the rest of us that were a little slow instead, because he had such a, a heart, such a, an understanding of, of humanity. And I, you know, my wife and I have taught little one-year-olds in Sunday school, uh, and some of the little Downs children that we taught, if another baby starts to cry, they'll run over and help him cry. They have such a, a humanity about them, and they can teach the world uh, a, a great deal and so it is especially uh, a, a broken feeling to me that when we we say that a little baby with down syndrome doesn't have even a right to to live or be seen it's how much those lives can impact our world that's right abortion is such a divisive issue on capitol hill in our culture how do you go about dialoguing about abortion and life issues without hurting relationships well, sometimes you can't always uh, protect the relationship when it's something of this magnitude. I mean, you know, the last time we debated something of this magnitude in this country, we shot each other to doll rags on the Civil War battlefield. So it is a very serious issue. But really, if we can just ask ourselves one question, does abortion kill a little baby? If it doesn't, I'm willing to quit talking about it. But if abortion really does kill a little baby, then those of us in the greatest country in the history of the world, in, in the land of the free and the home of the brave, we're also living in the, in the midst of the greatest genocide in the history of the human family. And if that doesn't cause us to pause and, and wake up, then I'm not sure what will. So it is an issue that should bring us together. Sometimes it divides us, but it's one that if we lovingly uh, speak the truth and yet uh, don't back away from our commitment to protect the innocent, I think eventually America will come around. I see that happening uh, all through history when that, as I mentioned a moment ago, when the, the, the humanity of the victim and the inhumanity of what's being done to them finally dawns on the collective conscience, then things begin to change. And I see that happening even now. Congressman, thank you for your work and thank you for your time. Well, God bless you.